In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand if you're able. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to this uh, uh, midweek service where we will be commemorating Etheldreda, the abbess of Ely, which died roughly in the year 678. We don't know exactly when she died, but, uh, or the day and the month, but uh, it's believed to, she has died uh, roughly around this time in 678, and we will uh, learn more about her life and how she can inspire us today later. Let us say together the prayer of preparation that uh, is in, uh, in bold in our screen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, glance the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. Let us confess our sins and failings and ask him who is rich in mercy for forgiveness and peace. You give your kingdom to the poor in spirit. Lord, have mercy. You give the earth for an inheritance to those who are meek. Christ, have mercy. You show yourself to those who are pure in heart. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, who bestowed such grace upon your servant Ethel Breda, that she gave herself wholly to the life of prayer and to the service of your true religion, grant that we, like her, may so live our lives on earth seeking your kingdom, that by your guiding we may be joined to the glorious fellowship of your saints through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we ponder on uh, God's Word. A reading from Revelation. After this, I heard what seemed to be the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power to our God. And from the throne came a voice saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and all who fear him, small and great. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand as we acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, behold the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the very image of God. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, and all of them became drowsy and, and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those brides, bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the you, be, you better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. One of the good things when we celebrate a life of a saint is that I have access to their biography here, and therefore I don't have to prepare much for my sermon, which is 
sometimes a very good thing. And so I'll read the wise words from John Darch and Stuart Burns from the, the book Saints on Earth, which gives a, uh, an account of Ethel Dreda, who was uh, the abbess of Ely. I don't know if you had the chance of ever going to the to Ely Cathedral, which is a, a beautiful place. So if you haven't been there, I recommend you go there. It's a, it's a beautiful place, a beautiful building, one of the best uh, cathedrals uh, of our of our land. So Ethel Dreda, sometimes referred to as Audrey was the daughter of Anna, a Christian king of the East Angles. Ethelthreda was married at a young age to uh, Tondbert, an Earl Dorman of South Girwas, but having taken a vow of chastity, she kept her virginity. Tondbert died three years into their marriage, and Ethelthreda withdrew to live on the Isle of Ely. She stayed there for five years until in 6060, at the request of her ha family, she married Egrith, the 15-year-old son of King Oswy of Northumbria, 15 years old, her husband, mm, second one. Once again, Ethelred refused to consummate her marriage, initially securing the agreement of her husband. However, after 12 years of an unconsummated marriage, Egrith admitted failure in his lengthy campaign for marital normality, and gave Ethelred the permission to become a nun. I mean, after 12 years, what do you expect? Yes. Egrith's final attempt at instigating a full marital relationship was an attempt to bribe Bishop Wilfred of York to release her from her vow of chastity. The bishop refused, and Egrith gave up. The marriage was annulled, and Ethelred moved into the monastery at Collingham in 672. A year later, Ethelred found, uh, founded a double monastery for both men and women in, at Ely in the Fens. This was no ordinary monastic community, having been formed out of much family wealth. Ethelred lived a relatively ascetic life there until her death from the plague in 678. The present Ely Cathedral occupies the site of Ethelred's monastery. Ethelred became one of the most popular female Anglo-Saxon saints, partially because of the legend which surrounded her body. Seventeen years after her death, her body was said to be incorrupt and her, and her grave clothes fresh. Many churches were dedicated in her honor and Beda wrote a long hymn in her praise. And now probably if I can say some words regarding the readings that we had and mainly the gospel. So Jesus presents us this, um, this parable of the, the, um, those, the bridegrooms, the bridesmaids, the, who are waiting for their bridegroom. And so we have five wise bridesmaids and five foolish bridesmaids. And what is Jesus telling us here? We have, to prepare, we have to be prepared with oil so that the lamb can carry on burning. Which kind of oil? The Holy Spirit that is ever in, in unceasingly um, giving us his strength, his power, and his direction for us to carry on, on this uh, uh, earthly pilgrimage. And why do we need the Holy Spirit? Or more specifically here in this context, why do we need the Holy Spirit, this lamp in the oil? Well, this lamp in the oil is basically in these five lamps. The five lamps are our five senses. Our five senses. So our, our five senses, the way that we go, go about on earth, how do we deal with others? How do we uh, conduct ourselves what, how do we touch others, how we speak to others, how we hear others, how we smell others. Um, so the five senses are here present, and, and it's basically a call from Jesus to use them as best as we can, and always um, with the Holy Spirit presiding over the use of our senses. So are our senses being used in a foolish way, 
so that when the Lord comes, we're totally disconnected from Him and we're not really ready to, to receive Him. We're not really in tune with, with His will for our lives. Or are we really wise? Because we've been using our senses in a wise way, in a moderate way, in a way that really brings glory to Christ. And therefore, when He comes, we're not caught off guard, but we are ready to go with Him back to heaven. And then again, Ethelreda is one of, of this, one of the best examples of someone who used her senses. Her senses were totally dedicated to God. She decided not to get married, and she decided to devote herself completely to God to the point where she wasn't touched by a man. And we praise God for these vocations, for these callings, that God, um, um, that God uh, makes, emerge, uh, makes them emerge in church because these men and women who really are totally devote, devoted to, to God, they are the backbone and the, and, and, um, the ones who are in, the, in the, the backstage praying for us, interceding for us, interceding for the church so that the church can do her job in the world. They are many times so discreet. We don't, we don't hear of them many times, but they're praying there unceasingly for us and, and for the coming of the kingdom. May we then be inspired by Ethel Dreda uh, in the best use of our uh, senses. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now bring before the Lord our intercessions. And we will use as a response to each, uh, uh, each section. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, you will respond. Hear our prayer. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for her leaders, the Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis, for the Orthodox Patriarchs, for the leaders of the Church of England, Archbishop Justin, Archbishop uh, Stephen, for our own bishops, Gouli and Peter, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. for the leaders of our sister churches and for all clergy and people. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for Elizabeth, our queen, for the parliament, the courts, for all of those who are in authority in our country, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority especially those who have, take, have to take decisions in this time of pandemic where there's so many areas suffering because of this virus. We pray for those areas where in an ongoing conflict like Burma, Yemen, Syria, Palestine and Israel, and also for places where there is tension such as Cabo Delgado in Mozambique, Brazil, and Colombia. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this community, for every city, town, and village, and for all the people who live in it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need. For the absolution of our sins and offenses. Lord, in your mercy. Oh. For those who travel by land, air, of wa or water, for the sick and the suffering. And we pray especially for our own vicar, Canon Jeanette, for her husband, John Medway. We pray also for John Wanse, 
and for Joyce. And we pray also, Lord, that you may strengthen Margaret as she provides solace and support to Joy. We pray for prisoners and captives and for their safety, health, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray also for the repose of Auntie Florence. And we pray for all of those who have gone before us in faith and in communion with Elfadreda and all the saints. We commit ourselves, one another, and our life to Christ our God. Merciful Father, accept his prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand if you're able. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. This day we honor you in St. Ethelreda, who consecrated her life to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. In her you show us your saving love as you call the human race back to its first holiness and invite us to taste on earth the gifts of the world to come. In communion with angels and archangels and all who served you on earth and worship you now in heaven, we raise our voice to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord. 
God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Martin of Tours and St. Ethel Dreda and all the saints, we may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Blessed Jesus, that your word we are gathered all to hear you. Let our hearts and souls be sad now to seek and love and fear you. Teach us not to lie. 
Let us pray. Merciful God, you gave such grace to your servant Ethel Dreda that she served you with singleness of heart and loved you above all things. Help us, whose communion with you has been renewed in this sacrament, to forsake all that holds, holds us back from following Christ and to grow into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And please stand to receive the blessing. Uh, before we do that, we do actually have a notice, which is that the government has moved away from central testing sites. And we've been asked to provide COVID, rapid COVID tests that you do at home, not just to, not just to the, uh, all our parishioners, but also the government has requested that we put a test in every bag that we give to people attending uh, St. Martin's Food Bank. So they have just arrived. Um, so if you would like to take a test kit, each box contains seven tests um, they are here and see me at the end of the service and then you'll be able to get one thank you so let us then to receive the blessing God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and steadfastness and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.